song. Um, <laughs> I had a um, I had a hard time deciding whether to play this gig or not. But once I decided to play it, it was really obvious that I was going to play it and that nothing or nobody was going to change my mind about the fact that I decided to play it. So there's someone, um... Why didn't you do it sooner? Why didn't I do it sooner? Yeah. I don't know, because I was always busy. <laughs> um, but there's someone I wanted to thank who's not here. Um, who's basically the reason I took this gig. Woo! Robbie! Uh, <laughs> no. So the story goes like this. Justin um, Bieber! I did a... It's not Justin Bieber either. He had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Rihanna! Justin Bieber's gay. I don't think Justin Bieber's gay. I think he's just... confused. Um, wouldn't you be? I think any of us would have a very difficult time in the day of the life of Justin Bieber. Um, so I'd, uh, if you if you know anything about the last year or so of my life, I did a Kickstarter. Which some of you guys might have supported, and if you did, thank you so much. Part of the Kickstarter was um, I sold a bunch of house parties, which is I would come anywhere in the world and I would play in your house. And for $5,000, and most people just like started Facebook groups and collected money from a bunch of people. And, um, and it meant that I could come do shows in places where I would never think to. So I went to like Calgary, Canada, which is <laughs> fucking in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to go to South Africa and, you know, the middle of nowhere, Germany, and all these weird little places. And also, I sold one in Tel Aviv. And a bunch of people, many of whom are probably here at the gig tonight, will be at this house party tonight. Um, and I figured that was it. You know, I would come and I would do the house party and I would leave. And then this July, I was on tour in London, in Europe. And um, all these Israeli fans, like, yeah, like you. <laughs> You know, and I don't mean like hundreds of people, I'm talking like nine people, but nine feels like a lot. We're coming to shows in different places in Europe, going, why aren't you playing a show in Tel Aviv? And I was like, well, I am, I'm playing a house party. And they were like, we know we can't get into the house party. Why aren't you playing a show in Tel Aviv? And I was like, uh, well, you know, uh, my crazy New York activist friends have told me about the boycott, and I know it would be a total pain in the ass to do it. Um, but, but I'll, but I'll think about it, and I'll talk to my friends about it, and I'll, I'll, I'll go forth and research. And then, a few weeks after all this happened, I was in London, and um, I had lunch with the lead singer of the legendary Pink Dots. And, and I mentioned this in passing, I was like, oh, Israel. And he, and he said, oh, we, we're, we just played a gig in Tel Aviv and we're going back to play another gig. And this was so hugely important to me because this guy is like my hero. Um, not just as a songwriter, but as a human being. And I asked him, so what was your experience? Like, did people give you shit? Was it hard? Did it suck? Do you know, could you, like, was, what happened? And he said, we were walking along the river, we were in Camden, and we were walking along the river, and he said, he's, he's got this great British accent, I can't really, I can't really do it, but he's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> But you know, I, I think, I think you should go do the game. <laughs> I, I think,
if I hadn't, if I hadn't got, had that one conversation, it, none of the political people would have mattered to me. I didn't really, you know, the fact that my heroes did, were playing on this stage, who I um, feel very ideologically aligned with, um, it was like getting the like magic wand on the shoulder to come to just say yes, to give me the excuse to say yes. So I did, and then I got a ration of shit on um, on the internet from all of the people who thought that I shouldn't come play. It didn't matter very much. Uh, but I did find um, trying to figure out what to play tonight. I was really thinking about like all of the shit that I've had to go through for the past month and all the like all the defending of myself that I've wanted to do and haven't done because I know that it will make things worse. And you know, I've talked about all of this like for the last couple of days since I got here, everyone's like <laughs> Um and the interesting thing about being me is that I've gone through like five giant internet shitstorms already in my life. And this one actually hasn't been that bad <laughs> compared to the other ones. And I was like, you know, you, all of you people are yelling at me, but you're like, you're also yelling at Rihanna. I don't feel very special. <laughs> my other internet shit storms were just about me. <laughs> this was about everybody. <laughs> uh, so. As I was making my song selection, I was thinking a lot about that. This is um, this is a song from the second Dress and Dolls record that is um, called Yes, Virginia. And like, like, like pretty much all of my songs, it's not about one thing. It's about uh, six things. I often write about six things. It's actually it's probably about three things. But, um, I thought it was relevant in whatever fucking way you want to think it's relevant. It's about, um, it's about not accepting the truth of a complicated situation. And, <laughs> and it came from, it's got all these weird ingredients in it, including my step-grandmother and people who actually don't think that people got on trains to go to Auschwitz and died, and people who don't accept climate change and all these things kind of happened at once in my life and melded themselves into one song and this is that song.